Vita's a new console, so we thought it'd be really cool to make a totally new game to go with that. Because Little Deviancy is made up of a series of different levels that play in different ways, we've had to be very conscious about what's a good user experience. So the things you see in the final product for Little Deviants, they've all been really well tested and proven to be kind of exciting new ways to play. The Vita adds a new way of interacting to bring you closer to the action and makes you feel part of the environment. We all used to work at Codemasters, the four of us, myself, Simon, John, Chun, and there just came a point where we decided you know, we'd kind of had enough. And a little bit after that, we had this big grand idea of starting a studio. <laughs> big Big started, it was about 10 years ago, it was 2001. The first game we made was Pursuit Force, which was a kind of innovative uh, game for the PSP when the PSP was new. We wanted to bring Hollywood to the small screen, I suppose. We took a lot of inspiration from every action movie that's fast-paced and bullets flying and lots of vehicles. We did a sequel to that and we took a really good PS3 game, Motorstorm, and brought that to the PSP. So, you know, we were on handheld that whole time, so that kind of led us to being at the forefront of development when Vita came along. A few years ago, the bosses of Sony approached us and said, we've got this really cool idea for a new console. It's got all these great new interfaces, like front touch, rear touch, got cameras on the front, cameras on the back, really good gyros. What can you do with it? I was very excited, I must admit. I am a bit of a tech geek, so any kind of technology does excite me, but this more so than any others because of all the different hardware features that you don't even see on a lot of console platforms, let alone a handheld device. We were just amazed at the possibilities. Little Deviants is a game that we designed around the Vita console, but it focuses on these characters called the Deviants. They've crash landed from outer space on this weird square planet, which is a bit like the Earth, but square and they've been chased by these evil robots called the bots and it's up to the player to help them out basically they've got to protect them from the bad guys and also help them escape from the planet so rebuild their rocket and fly away. Little Deviance was born out of a very very simple idea. Imagine a piece of cloth that's stretched and you place a ball on it and then you just don't like to use the phrase touching cloth, but it works. So you sort of poke the cloth underneath and make a hill and the ball rolls around. We started off with levels that required quite precise movement. And what we realized after using the rear touch panel for a while is that that wasn't the ideal way of using the rear touch panel. Whilst it still worked, not everyone could completely get to grips with it, so we felt that making a whole game based around that mechanic was probably the wrong direction to go in. So we had a big sit down with the team, and one of the proposals was, okay, well we use the front touch pad as well, and the microphone, and the motion sensors, and the cameras and we'll go down the route of making this a game about experiencing the Vita. We didn't really want to present Little Deviants as a bunch of mini-games. We want it to be a flowing, story-based experience. When you start off, you've only got a few levels available. You progress through the story, you unlock new levels, and eventually you end up helping the Deviants get rid of the evil bots and escape from the planet. The augmented reality games make use of the rear-facing camera. So when you're playing a game, what you're actually seeing is the environment that you're in on the screen with the various game elements overlaid on top. So it looks like the actual game itself is actually invading your world. The game's played in a full 360-degree arc. So you're in there, immersed with them, interacting with them. Great lot of fun and very, very frantic. <coughs> 
With the original concept, the Deviants started out as just ball-shaped characters. We thought they were really fun to get some movement out of, but we wanted to get more expression into them. We sort of asked for being able to have a body for the Deviant so that they could actually move around by themselves, which could show off the different personalities of all the Deviant types. We showed it to a few people and it was, it was kind of good, but they were a little bit too scary. So we had another look at it and decided to go through and make them cuter. The Goofer, he's the social Deviant. He always wants to get attention, he wants to jump in and join in and play. The way we animated him was to just have him bouncing everywhere, just running around with his tongue out all the time, like a, a puppy dog. It's got quite a short attention span, so he wants to be entertained all the time, and it gets into mischief quite often. Pyrus can be quite moody and explosive, but best to describe him more like a, a teenager. Underneath that tough exterior, he's quite vulnerable. Nucleor is this hyperactive, crazy-eyed, slightly mad deviant. He loves breakdancing. The Blobber, he's, he's like the baby of the family. He's very naive, he's very cute, always joyful, because he's made of sort of a jelly type thing. Uh, he's indestructible, which comes in handy when there's bombs coming along. Frost the Deviant, he's kind of the older, wiser Deviant, who worries a lot, slightly clumsy, because he's made of ice, he slides around a lot and loves opera music. He's in a big auditorium and the zombies don't like him very much and they're throwing bottles at him. The player's got to sing different pitches of notes to actually fire notes and smash the bottles. We had to have a separate room for the testing of the, the Opera Deviant game because my, my singing's not that great, I must admit. 